Welcome to you all. This week on our last installment of Better Know a Seth, I want to share with you a few quick items. Number one, I have webbed toes. No, not all of them, but a couple of them are definitely webbed, as are my father's and his father before him. Number two, I need a haircut. This pandemic life has put that kind of grooming on the back burner, so I've grabbed some trims from friends and loved ones in a safe way when possible, but it's been a few months. So I'm looking forward to that sooner than later, which leads to number three. This past week, I'm thrilled to tell you, I got my second COVID vaccination shot. And I know so many within our congregation are well on their way as well. So we have walked a hard road this past year and we are not out of the woods yet. We will continue to be safe and sure about what works for bringing us back together because boy, we belong together. But it is coming. It is coming. Better know a Seth. Who is Seth? I am Seth. I am Seth Whispleway. I am the interim pastor of Rincon Congregational United Church of Christ based out of Tucson, Arizona. I use he and him pronouns and I am so glad you've joined us for this time of peace and pause of reflection and encouragement, music and prayer, challenge and more. Thank you for joining us because wherever you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. Whether LGBTQIA, all abilities, black, brown, white, a little bit of each, man, woman, or a bit of both, older, younger, or a bit of both, welcome. Welcome to this online worship service as we approach the end of Lent, what really feels like a Lenten year, and look to resurrections on the other side. So now, will you please prepare your spirits for our call to worship? Welcome to this call to worship, to this wonderful day, to this worship service. Let us gather together to worship, to pray, and to learn with great joy. We come looking for Jesus in scripture and music in our pastor's words, and in our own life experiences. We seek to follow in the way of Jesus as he traveled through the wilderness and as he speaks to us from a mountaintop. We place before God and before one another our own wilderness and mountaintop experiences, our stories, we bring our whole selves, our gladness and hopes, as well as our fears and sorrow. Oh God, speak to us this day. Show us, touch us with your presence. Guide us on our Lenten journey with Jesus. Amen. Struggle is too pressing. 
take a few minutes to pray and then reflect together, to go deep inward, to come back to ourselves and back to God. We acknowledge the ways we aren't doing okay, or maybe we haven't done okay or as well as we'd like in the week prior. So we take this time collectively in spirit to pray and hold and get ready for the messages that God is speaking into our hearts and speaking to all of us. Will you all please pray with me? Oh God, you who are always doing a new thing, we confess that we sometimes close windows against the fresh air of new ideas, against the noise of other people's worries, against the winds of change. God of every place and time, we confess that we often draw the curtains against people who are different, against world news or community concerns. Forgive us for how we insulate ourselves, our doors that aren't as open as we might think they are, the security systems on our hearts. Open up our lives, God, and let your spirit blow through. Amen. May the blessing of God, the spirit of life, fall on our community. May it be a safe place, full of understanding and acceptance, where you can be as you are without the need of any mask or pretense or image. May this place be one of discovery, discovery of the love of God, the peace of Jesus, and the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, where from the clay all can emerge to deepen and refine their knowledge of God's kingdom. Amen. Today's scripture passage is from the end of Jesus's Sermon on the Mount. 
easy to imagine for us with the mountains that surround Tucson, for those of you who are here. But Jesus speaks in other colorful images that we know about here in the desert or other places. Wide gates like our driveways, narrow gates like our patios, predators and prey, good and bad fruit. My favorite being the saguaro, even though it does have needles. And in a summarizing conclusion to the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks about building houses on rock, like in our foothills, or on sand, like in our washes. And he talks about storms, which we always long for, with wild winds and driving rain. So hear these words of scripture from Matthew, chapter 7, verses 13 through 29. Enter through the narrow gate. The gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction. And there are many who take it. But the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life. And there are few who find it. Now beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? Every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will know them by their fruits. Jesus continues, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of God in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many deeds of power in your name? But I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from me, you evildoers. Everyone then, who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise one who built a house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish one who built a house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and great was its fall. Now, when Jesus had finished saying all these things, the crowds were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. May the scripture be blessed in our hearing. Amen. Imagine that hillside in Galilee where Jesus is speaking. Jesus is seated, surrounded by his disciples, a huge crowd circled around them. 
Perhaps it's the rhythm and tone of his voice. Maybe it's the pace of his words. Somehow they know he is building toward a climax, a moment of decision. He presents a series of vivid images, all in pairs. First, there are two gates opening to two roads. We can't travel both. One, he says, is a broad and smooth, like a Roman highway, it leads to destruction. One is narrow and rocky, like a mountain path, it leads to life. Go along with the crowd, Jesus implies, and you'll end up in disaster. But dare to be different, dare to follow a new and different path, and you'll learn what it means to be alive. Next, there are two vines or two trees producing two different kinds of fruit, each representing aliveness. One approach to life produces thorns, briars, and thistles. Another approach produces luscious fruits. Get your inner identity integrated and true, he tells them, and your life will be fruitful. Next, there are two groups of people, one entering Jesus' presence, the other going away. One group may boast of all its religious credentials, but Jesus isn't impressed by talk. He's looking for people he knows, people he recognizes, people we might say who get him and understand what he's about. We can identify them because they translate their understanding into action. Finally, there are two builders building two houses, one on sand, one on rock. They both represent people who hear Jesus's message. They both experience falling rain, rising floodwaters, and buffeting winds. The big difference? The person who builds on the solid foundation, whose structure withstands the storm, doesn't just hear Jesus's message. She translates it into action. Each pair of images challenges us to move beyond mere interest and agreement to commitment and action. And what is the desired action? To take everything Jesus has taught us, all we have considered as we have listened to him here on this hillside, and translate it into our way of living, our way of being alive. It makes sense then for us to go back a bit and review much of the substance of Jesus' teaching. Be among the lowly in spirit, remain sensitive to pain and loss, live in the power of gentleness, hunger and thirst for true justice, show mercy to everyone rather than harshness. Don't hide hypocrisy or duplicity in your heart, work for peace, be willing to joyfully suffer persecution and insult for doing what is right, because you can expect to. Dare to be a nonconformist by being boldly different, like salt and light in the world. Demonstrate your differentness through works of generosity and beauty. Reject both mindless conformity to tradition and knee-jerk rejection of it. Instead, discern the true intent of tradition and pursue that intent into new territory. Never hate, hold grudges, or indulge in unrighteous anger, but instead aim to be the first to reach out a hand. Avoid word inflation when making vows. Instead, practice clear, direct speech, so simple words like yes and no retain their full value. Reject revenge. Instead, pursue creative, proactive, nonviolent ways to overcome wrongs done to you. Love your enemies as well as your friends and so imitate God's big generous heart for all creatures. Cultivate, cultivate a hidden life of goodness by giving to the poor, praying and fasting on your own. When you pray in secret, pray through four movements of your heart first, Orient yourself toward a caring yet mysterious God. Second, align your desires with God's great desire for a just and compassionate world. Third, bring to God your needs and concerns, both physical and spiritual. And finally, 
Prepare to re-enter the public world of oppressions and temptations, trusting God to guide you and strengthen you. Remember that God isn't setting up a forgiveness market, but is building a whole forgiveness economy. Don't let greed cloud your outlook on life, but store up true wealth by investing in a growing portfolio of generosity and kindness. Be especially vigilant about money becoming your slave master. Don't let anxiety run and ruin your life, but instead trust yourself to God's gracious and parental care and seek first and foremost to build the just and generous society that would fulfill God's best dreams for humanity. Don't develop a sharp eye for the faults and failures of others, but instead first work on your own blindness to your own faults and failures. Don't push on people treasures they are not yet ready for or can't yet appreciate the value of. Go to God with all your needs and don't be discouraged if you face long delays. Remember that God loves you as a faithful, caring parent and will come through in due time. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Realize that aliveness includes tough choices and that thriving comes with suffering. Don't be misled by religious talk. What counts is actually living by Jesus's teaching. So some may claim that God is angry and needs to be appeased through sacrifice. And some may claim that God is harsh and demanding, requiring humans to earn God's favor through scrupulous religious rule keeping. Some may claim that God scrutinizes our brains and speech for perfect doctrinal correctness. But Jesus, like the prophets before him, proclaims a different vision of God. Based on what Jesus has told us today, God is gracious and compassionate and does not need to be appeased through sacrifice. God's love is freely given and does not have to be earned. What God desires most is that we manifest God's commonwealth of justice, live with generosity and kindness, and walk humbly with God in our relationship with God. Now, if you were there that day on that Galilean hillside, what would your decision have been? No doubt you would have been impressed, but would you have said yes? Will you? Amen. Jesus calls us to join him in love of God and love of our neighbors. Our church accepts this invitation and this challenge to follow Jesus' way using the resources that we, you and I, share. Let us give thanks and joy for the ministries of our church. Dear God, in celebration of the many gifts that you have shared with us and in recognition of the faith-filled ministries of this church, we ask you to bless these offerings. May you continue to journey with us as we seek to be faithful disciples and follow Jesus' way. Amen. I'm the chair of personnel for Rincon Congregational United Church of Christ. I've been a member of Rincon since 1980. Um, children were reared at Rincon. Larry and I have been actively involved in the church during that time. And as I look forward during 2021 as chair of personnel, there are many hopes that we have as a group to continue supporting our staff, hiring good new staff when it comes available, 
looking forward to making sure that we are actively participating in what our church needs during this period of time as far as personnel. It's a nice place to begin in the springtime to take a look at what we see ourselves doing during this time. And as a church, how we grow, what we look forward to not only in this year, but also in every year as we continue to make Greenland a wonderfully welcoming place for our community and our existing people who are actively involved. A big part of that is obviously bringing us back that we haven't seen in a while and being away from church and what we do is a huge piece of that. So I'm sure I'm not alone when I'm saying we are so encouraged by the fact that maybe soon we'll be able to come to church together and hug each other. Also, I hope that during this time, we take a glimpse back as to where we were and how we would like to move forward, not only for ourselves and our families, but the structure of our church. So there are things that come to mind, jot them down, send me an email, be thinking about where you are within your church and how we as a personnel group can do our best to make sure that we feel fulfilled as a group. And we're anxious to do that. Thanks. When we treat each other in a way that's fair, what a wondrous day. Respect and care, what a wondrous day, what a wondrous day, love and justice, what a wondrous day, peace and freedom, what a wondrous day, hallelujah, what a wondrous day, when we love our neighbors and our love in turn, what a wondrous day. Each other in our quest to learn. What a wondrous day! What a wondrous day, love and justice. What a wondrous day, peace and freedom. What a wondrous day, hallelujah. What a wondrous day! When there's no more hunger and there's no more hate. What a wondrous day! God, we thank you for today, for being with us, accepting our worship and prayers, and for guiding us on our way. Bless us as we go, and in turn, may we bless others. In Jesus' name, amen.
imagine all the people. Number one, I, a couple of them are definitely webbed, as were my father's, and he's not dead. <laughs> Wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here.